Um, I want to start this conversation with, well, is it a statement, is it a vision, or just a question, just to, to rattle the box a bit. Um, I've been looking at the Drupal stats, you know, um, and you can find them on Drupal.org. Um, and for the last couple of years, we've been stuck at around 2% market share. <coughs> oh, it's not growing. Um, let's imagine in 10 years' time, nobody's using Drupal anymore. Nobody. <coughs> you know, that will hurt, you know, most of you because we all rely on Drupal. What can we do different now or in the near future <coughs> to make sure Drupal will prosper and even grow again? Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a difficult question to start with, but you have any ideas what we can do? I can kick a ball if, if you want. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can you? Bring it a bit closer. Nobody yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you can. Um, I don't have the answer, of course. I have no idea. Um, but um, what, what can I say is I don't think we are doing anything bad. And the only way I can answer it is watching the community of the Drupal you know, ecosystem 10 years ago. And uh, 10 years ago, um, um, the code, it wasn't clean. Let's say it wasn't reliable enough like it is now. Um, it was a more functional approach, of the procedural approach, and and the community it wasn't that organized as it is now. There were no uh, initiatives like there are now. There were no uh, governance like there is now. There were no uh, important initiatives like the one I think is driven by uh, Paul, which is about promoting Drupal. A common pitch that we can share, and and there wasn't a product manager, which I believe is Webcheek. Mm -hmm. um, so, ten years ago, so if we look at each other, ten years ago we had done a lot, and even though I don't have the answer, I'm confident we can do better and be prepared for the next ones. Do you have any ideas what we can do better currently? I think we should. Um, I, I have to answer this from, a, from a, a, a developer perspective and in the last two years we've done uh, some things that were wrong but were, uh, <coughs> uh, the, the, they were um, required. Like when we did a big step from, from, um, from 7 to 8 and we have to move to a more object rental approach, we have to rewrite the whole code. So there is something that has destroyed us and a lot of talents they left just because they had the burnout which is different from what we explained but they have to let because they were too stressed <coughs> and i think what they have to do is make sure that we did that step and now we are more in a uh, let's say bright path and we have to get the talents those talents back yeah. so <laughs> probably the first step is um is 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 is, is, is recollecting those talents back and giving like a more bright path so is getting people. Um, then I think that the, it's, it's more if we if we find a way to be more local. I think Drupal, the team today is you know the, the global work we can do. I think Drupal globally, Drupal globally is doing very well. Mm -hmm. We are really organized. We are remote friends, so globally we are okay. I think locally we are kind of failing most of the times because we have these big events but there are situations where there is nothing there are cities and towns where there are no communities mm -hmm. even I mentioned this for the sprint by London though, uh, I thought we had a lot of groups there was no um, there was no uh, continuity there was no um, um, uh, a reliable place where people can go and do meetups and mm -hmm. do something regularly so I think globally we're doing well locally less. So okay, so, you, so, so you would state like to get organized, better organized locally. Yeah, that definitely. That, all right. But I think we have to understand that the demographics have changed a lot as well. Like 10 years ago, um, everyone was very young. Uh, I think if you were starting development now, you probably wouldn't 
choose Drupal as something to get started with, you could come out of a JavaScript bootcamp or mm -hmm. you know, all those kinds of things people are doing. So I think we need to um, make sure we've made that mental shift to understand that people are older and generally people doing Drupal, it's their job. They're not you know, really turning up to volunteer stuff as much. Um, and that's okay. We yeah. should be all right with that. Well, well is, it, is it okay? Um, because, um, you know, I've been, you know, in the Drupal community for about 13 years now. Um, and we started all young and fresh, but I see a lot of friends here who, who turn, you know, grey. You know, I'm turning grey <laughs> as well. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the community is getting older. Um, and the younger, younger developers, you're saying, are more attracted towards JavaScript. Is there something we can do to attract, like, young people? Who, who have that energy um, uh, so we can grow the community and also contribute, grow contributions again. Is, is, is there something we can do? Do you, do you have ideas about that? Me? Mm -hmm. well, no, <laughs> I, um, I mean, if we're using the technologies that people want to use, I yeah. think that's a good step. Um, I think if we're more clear about what it is that we actually provide as software, I think that would help. Um, you know, we don't have like the best rendering engine and stuff like that, but we can manage content really well. And a lot of clients that I work with, you know, they, they're like, oh, one day we'll replace Drupal. And I kind of laughed myself because I'm like, with what? Because there's just not that much out there yeah. um, that does as much as Drupal in terms of like managing content that has workflows and translations and all those, they're hard problems. Um, that's not to say that something won't come along in the future. So we should definitely watch out for that. But um, I, I think our knowledge is in uh, managing the, that content and working on content models and seeing projects from start to finish. It's not necessarily like we're really focused on this technology stack and so I think we need to kind of broaden ourselves um, in that terms and you know, recognize that our community strength is in those particular types of problems that we can solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's... Um, I think you can look at it from the point of view of uh, a developer and what language or what technology they want to use mm -hmm. and that will always have a bearing on, well, that, that'll be their passion, that'll be their chosen technology and I think in the world of integration it's always a case of, well, do we build our microservices in Node.js or do we use an integration platform and stuff like that. But then if you take a bit of a step back and you think, well, what are the other factors that we need to consider when people make a decision yeah. over and above the code that they write or the language that they use? There's, from a business perspective, what business value do people get from different options? But then from a social and a personal perspective, like we were talking about this over lunch, how much of a social enterprise is there from a technology? How much, and Drupal's amazing at this, how much of a sense of community do yeah. you get, friends that you make? I think there's a lot that we can do to compel people to want to be involved in something over and above the technology that we provide. Yeah. So, so you say it's a unique identifier, the community is a unique identifier for Drupal as a community and we should communicate that in a broader sense um, and that's one of the strengths of, of, of Drupal, is that, is that what you're saying? I'm saying it's one thing that needs to continue to be yeah. a, a, a massive strength for Drupal. Yeah. People, and especially when it's any open source technology or technology that has an open source background, it, it's a belief system, right? It, it, you believe in it, you're passionate about it, it's not just something that you've been told to do for your job, mm -hmm. if you come from that way of thinking. Yeah. And that, in part, is because of that sense of community, and as mm -hmm. soon as that starts to be lost, you'll lose <coughs> that attraction for a lot of people who want to use it. Yeah. So, so you're, you're also saying that, um, that we need to attract new people uh, to get into the community, um, and, and that's one of the, well, uh, I'd say it in English, uh, um, compelling uh, reasons to, to join. So you have a group of friends, you have a group of uh, 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 people you can work with, laugh with, and have a beer with. So, mm. so, yeah. And give back, to, give back uh, with and, as well, and like back, contribute yeah. back to planet and the society. Yeah. So, so how can we organize this, like, locally? Um, uh, the DA, uh, I'm, I'm board member of the DA, um, um, and there's a limited team that we have, and, and we're doing a lot with the limited team we have. 
Um, but how can we do this and organize this locally? Do, do you have ideas around that? You were talking about organizing events, but how can we organize this locally? Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's a good question. It, it's a difficult answer. There are there are situations in, in some countries, like I think in Spain, where they have a, a national association, mm. and and uh, you, I don't know if you have to or you can create the city or the local uh, member of this association. So there are ways where there is a governance in some countries. If it works or not, then um, uh, it depends by the members. The experience that I had is with. Um, uh, uh, I start technology by joining a Linux user group. The Linux user group, it wasn't related to any big organization, it was just a group. And the only reason why people were attending was for the install uh, fest, that's what we called. So you go there and you just know Linux and install the machine and that's it. And Linux, I can tell you, is a pretty boring topic. Although, yes. and, and uh, we had, we had um, uh, people were coming uh, sometimes a lot, just to have the system installed. Uh, and as I said, there was no organization and no governance. And there were a lot of LUGs, uh, uh, LUGs, well, um, L-U-G, in, uh, in the whole, in the whole, in the whole Italy. As I said, there was no governance. And I think it worked very well. Mm -hmm. And it worked just because the local, there was no governance, but the local was attracting people just because it was uh, interesting. So I think if we, uh, we, it, I, I know, I know, um, I'm not a big believer of governance coming from above. So mm -hmm. the Drupal Association saying how we should do things, I'm not a big fan. It would be good, right, mm -hmm. for some situation, but not a big fan. I believe that com something coming from the bottom, like doing this kind of regular events where we showcase what we do to people, then that, that is really going to work. Yeah, and, and do you see a, a possibility that we start sharing all these local initiatives um, and, and knowledge that we have, that we start sharing this amongst well, the countries. We, well, we have over 40 countries in Europe with different languages. And, uh, do you think that that would be an interesting option, that we start sharing um, uh, no, the way you, you organized uh, with the whole team, you've organized Drupal Camp uh, successfully, and we can see that already, <laughs> uh, to have applause for that. But how, how did you do it? And, and sharing that knowledge, would that be beneficial uh, uh, for helping Drupal as a whole? So at Drupal Cons, um, they have the um, community day on the Monday, yeah. which is where um, people from Drupal, from different countries, have got Drupal camps and they all meet together and they all have the same topic of how do we make our events success. And we started to produce a document where it's all shared on drupal.org, on groups.drupal.org, where other people can contribute back to it and they can make amends and, you know, this succeeded for our camp, this is how we can do it, you know. And I think by having that knowledge base, we can build upon the strengths of one event to another mm -hmm. and we can learn from our mistakes and make it better. And by doing that, each year, you, you know, the Drupal events will grow and grow and grow. And we've got drupalcool.com, which will tell you where all the Drupal events are. So, and in fact, there's, I think there's another six coming up very shortly. So, you know, we've got a lot of Drupal events. And coming from working in an agency and dealing with a lot of um, other communities, um, WordPress, Craft, CMS, etc., they aren't as welcoming as the Drupal community is. Mm. Yes, we do have our arguments and stuff in the side the community, but overall it's really yeah. healthy. Part of being on the CWG, I see that other communities have a lot more issues than we do. So that's a good thing, but we want to make it better. But I think by us learning the mistakes, we'll make it stronger. And going back to your earlier point about how we can make Drupal better overall, you know, Sally um, is doing the um, the JavaScript um, initiative for the Drupal content admin yeah. approach. Now that is a fantastic approach because that is good. That makes the content editors um, experience a thousand times better mm -hmm. and a thousand times quicker than it currently is. One of the issues with Drupal is the UX. It's sluggish. We get customers say, "Oh, I prefer WordPress because it's really easy to use." You know, the amount of times I've heard that, mm -hmm. it's a repetitive thing. The admin, the JS initiative, 
is changing that. And I think by putting all these changes into place, we're going to make Drupal stronger overall. And we always pitch with Drupal, but it's always not always the solution. But it would be amazing if it was always the solution. And I think we're slowly getting there over time. Yeah. All right. I'll talk about this more on Sunday during my, <laughs> my talk, because I come to that. But um, I think the thing to remember with WordPress is they've just been riffing on this one content type for like 15 years. And so, yeah, they can do a blog post really well. Whereas we have, <laughs> you know, we're like, hey, you can just build anything you can think of. And so it's a lot harder to build something that has generic solutions for specific scenarios. Um, so I wouldn't beat ourselves up too badly. Yeah. About that. Should, should we communicate more about that strength versus WordPress? So that, that there is a differentiator between WordPress and Drupal. Should we communicate more about that? Yeah, I think we. There's this trend to just like add everything ever to Drupal Core. And it, it's like every release cycle, everyone's excited if there's a new feature. But I think we don't play to what our core strength is, and that is. You can build all these content types and add fields and, and field types, and, and that's what it does really, really well. And I don't see any um, other systems doing that as well as Drupal. Um, and then there's you know lots of things in Drupal Core that authors and, and these people making these decisions just don't care about. Yeah. So I'd love to see more effort put into like fixing bugs associated with those rather than let's put all this time into these these you know. Uh, th these features that just aren't going to be useful for a lot of people. All right. All right. When we talked about like like uh, promoting Drupal, um, you were telling that okay, there is a uh, on Drupal.org <coughs> there is a, a, a page where you share knowledge about organizing camps. Would it be interesting to have a page in which we start sharing knowledge about promoting Drupal? As in PR, yeah. you know, there is an I initiative, the, 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 the promoting Drupal initiative, but should we find, let's say, when we're talking about local versus global, should we find like local initiatives working together on a PR perspective even more? Like a press kit? Hmm? A press kit? Well, yeah, well, a, a, a press kit, but also, uh, for example, if the DA sends out a press release, is that all local countries can translate it into their local language and then send it out to their local press. So yeah. the DA actually doesn't like people doing that, from what I've seen. That's not true. It's <laughs> <laughs> true, I can show you, if you want to look in uh, the, the general channel in Slack about three days ago, yeah. um, there was someone posted an article that was on Ars Technica, I think, and it was about one of the Drupal, uh, the security vulnerability, and it was uh, mistitled, it's like, oh, everyone's gonna die. <laughs> this thing, which is just wildly untrue. And so I think uh, someone had contacted us and some representatives from the DA were like, please don't do that, just let us know and we'll deal with it. And I think the reason is that maybe in the past some people have been talking to the press and it's kind of appeared that they're official representatives of Drupal and, you know, we all have our own take on everything. Well, so well, that my impression from the DA has been like, don't do that. Yeah. Well, well my, my, my perspective is different um, because we had lots of discussions about, you know, generating PR, but um, I'm in a position where I started having discussions, okay, how, how can we governance this across the globe, you know, to make sure, okay, there is a, uh, a, a vulnerability, there is uh, a new version um, with lots of new features, how can we bring this across to our audience uh, via which channels? You know, um, and the DA is, is not in a position where they can send out a press release. Well, they can send it out to an Ars Technica or anything, but not to Emers, which is a local magazine in the Netherlands, which has a powerful position in the Netherlands. They can't. They have, don't have the resources for that. So I, I'm thinking about, can, is there a way we can set up a governance for PR as you are with uh, organizing camps. I think there was a group a few years ago in the UK that um, like a few companies got together to put a Drupal um, booth up. It's uh, an open source conference. It I is, yeah. Uh, was, Oscon uh, was no, O'Reilly one. It doesn't matter yeah. what it was. We, but I thought it was really good. Yeah, nice. in, in the Netherlands as well. Yeah, we, we've done that in the Netherlands. Um, and 
Um, but it upset, like it also upsets some people to to do that kind of thing because they feel like they're being left out, or like yeah. you know, if the groups have certain ideas about Drupal, then yeah. you know, and this, people and this, get upset. Uh, this is where probably the DA can play a role. It's like, okay, how do we communicate about Drupal? What is the standardized language? Um, when you look, for example, you're saying in Spain there's an, an, a local association. Uh, there's one in the Netherlands, there's one in, in Germany. That there's quite a few local associations. But the way they present themselves are different. You know, if you look at their local websites, everybody's talking different about Drupal, what it is, what the pros and cons are. Um, should, do you think that the DA could play a role in standardizing this across the globe? Would that be helping? What's your opinion on that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I think that everybody needs to have an understanding of what the objective is, right? Everybody yeah. needs to come to an agreement of what it is that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Like, everybody's probably heard this story. Um, it's one that sticks with me. When NASA were attempting to go to the moon, there were obviously loads of scientists and engineers, and they knew exactly what they were doing. But you go into the office and you ask the janitor and you ask him what his job is, and he says, I'm helping to put people on the moon. At every single level, whatever people's role is and whatever their impact is, they need to understand how what they're doing influences and impacts what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. To do that, you need to know what you're trying to achieve, and then you need to have a standard way of your team being yeah. a part of that. Yeah. So you're saying that we should create a dot on the horizon that everybody can understand. Is that, is that what you're saying? All right. <laughs> it's going to, be a going to be a challenge, though, because we have quite a diverse you know, talk about diversity, a diverse community, and they all have specific ideas on, on what Drupal is. Do you, do you think it, there, there's a, a, how do you say it in English, a common initiator? No, I don't know. A common denominator. Dominator, yeah, yeah. That, that's the word I was looking for. Is, is, do you think that that's possible? I mean, I so by a dot on the vision, this doesn't necessarily mean one discrete entity mm. or one technically defined Object, it, yeah. it's it's a vision, right? Yeah. It still can be open to interpretation and still yeah. leave plenty of room for variation and diversity. Mm -hmm. But it's that vision that yeah. needs to exist on the horizon that everybody mm -hmm. can agree with in the way that makes sense to them. Yeah. So so uh, Dries Barthard has um, uh, announced that yeah, Drupal is for ambitious projects. Is that um, specific enough for you? So yeah, that's the question. Is, that, is, it, is, it, is it specific enough? Yeah, Drupal is for ambitious projects? Or would you like to see it more narrowed down? I think you like, it even explicitly said it's for enterprise in Drupalcon, yeah. in Drupal Europe, sorry. Uh, ambitious, that's mostly the word he's been using, and, and probably he's been using enterprise as well. But uh, what I've seen online, it states ambitious. Would that be narrow enough for you? and your colleagues to work with? Can you turn the camera off so I can give you a proper answer to it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just, just, just. I mean, it just, it's a bit... I'm not going to say It's a bit waffly to me. Like, it's not specific enough. Mm. I mean, if they said, what's Drupal? And I said, Drupal's for ambitious digital experiences. I'm like, <laughs> what does that mean? All right. Is that, is that not the difference in corporate language? Between a vision and a mission. Mm. Mm. Having been through it recently, it's some people need the, the specific, but some people need motivated by aiming for something yeah. a bit fluffier. So is he's saying that it's like no, the know. dot on our dot on the horizon is to make <laughs> ambitious digital experiences. Well, that's Acquia, isn't it? Not Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that is Drupal. Um, Drupal. I understood it as it, it, it for ambitious projects. So I think it's probably trying to differentiate it from, say, WordPress, which might be for general <laughs> class. Whereas, you know, Drupal 8 is more complex, but it's also more capable. So therefore, yeah. it probably is suitable for ambitious projects. Yeah. I would agree. I think Drupal is for anyone. So you've got the Drupal support Facebook group. We've got people from all over the world who've got, they've just started their first web development site um, to someone that's been doing it for 10, 15 years. And you're getting the hobbyists 
to the enterprise level. Yeah. And the fact that we are getting all these different types of skills and um, people from different backgrounds is really great because it's showing that Drupal, yes, it's originally classed as an enterprise system, and it is. It is an enterprise system. We can do so much with Drupal out of the box. In fact, I've written a book on it, so you can... Yeah. <laughs> Always housing it. Add some plug there. Two out of five on Amazon. <laughs> 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 I don't know what the score is. Wow. <laughs> no, it's, it's, they're all in my house. <laughs> um, and it basically, it's as a developer coming into Drupal, what would I want to know? And it shows you that you can build so much in Drupal without actually touching any code. You don't get that in WordPress as much. You, in WordPress you get the like the hacky approach, don't you? We can no, edit you templates and <laughs> Pooping on WordPress. It, like, it does its, Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I actually would completely disagree with you about Drupal being for everyone. It's not for everyone. Like, if my friend who owns a flower shop was like, I need a website, I'm not going to be like, you should use Drupal because that's like a maintenance nightmare for mm. them and then inevitably me. I'd use Squarespace, you know. Yeah. Sorry? Until there's a flower shop distribution. <laughs> no. Well, even then, it's like you know, they just want to—they yeah. want to get on with running their business. They yeah, don't want to like be restoring corrupted databases at two a. You know, just yeah. use a service. Like, I don't think they need to use Drupal, and that's okay. Like, we will say, like, uh, a lot of people talk as if Dr the growth of Drupal is um, like imperative, and I think it's okay if we don't grow. I think it's okay if we stay the same. I've got a question here. Yeah, can I just touch on clients, people like me who uses the system as a content editor and I have marketing people doing their jobs and I know that Megan Saniki was here last year and the, top, the point she made was, as you mentioned as well, Drupal needs to be more accessible to people who use it and I do understand the point as to why people leave Drupal to go to WordPress and it's purely based on how easy is this for me to use. Capabilities, obviously, we all know that functionality is key and what, how much you can do with it. But as a client, and again, talking about messaging, you, you want to recruit and reinforce your messaging, yes. but obviously you need to know who you are to be talking to. Yes. Are you talking to people actually making the decisions about we need Drupal or mm. we need WordPress? Yeah. And that message about ambitious mm -hmm. is too generic from my point of view because okay. as a client I want something that is going to be useful for me that yep. I can grow that I can actually see you know kind of developing in the next few three four five years and I can stay within you know use uh, with my website in Drupal rather than thinking about moving and migrating and creating a brand new website so yep. I think that maybe obviously as a client, we are also expecting to, to have that communication coming from Drupal. Yeah. And uh, the role that agencies play in this, I think, is also key. Because if I outsource my work, all the information about what's going on inside Drupal, I'm expecting my agency to feed it through me, yeah. rather than me coming here just to find out by myself. Yeah. So I think that, I, you know, and this is just like my feedback yeah. uh, from my experience with Drupal in the last couple of years. And I think there is a huge you know, potential, mm -hmm. but I think that the fact that there are quite a lot of mixed messages, yeah, and, and people don't have that kind of clear objective as to what's the mission, and we need to communicate to specific groups, yeah. I think that's what uh, maybe Drupal is missing the point. I think that, again, it's not for everyone, as she clearly pointed out, and it depends on what the business needs are, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's when we, ba we basically make the decision about staying with Drupal or just moving somewhere else. Yeah. So that's basically, I don't know if you want to maybe just give us a, a, maybe give me an answer or maybe just your points of view as to what you think when you think about the clients like me, for example. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I think it's very good what you're saying. Um, I think it's about half a year ago that the Drupal Association decided, okay, we should uh, diversify our communication towards end users. You know, when you go to uh, Drupal.org now, uh, you'll say Drupal for marketeers, you know, so, so we, we, we are changing that now from a board perspective, I can, I can say so, from a DA perspective. Um, but there's a lot more that we can do. Um, I call this account-based marketing. It's okay, so who are we talking to? Who's our target audience? Um, who are the decision makers? And what is compelling for them? 
uh, when they have to choose for ACMS. So, mm -hmm. so there's still work to be done. So uh, thank you for this feedback, though. Yeah, it's okay, because I, I see that people have got different, you know, obviously conversations internally, but also, you know, don't forget about other people who are also coming to, you know, if I see that my, my Drupal experience is a good one to have, yes. I would definitely recommend to someone else yeah. coming to me and asking, oh, what CMS do you use or what system do you use to maintain your website? And then I would go and say, I use Drupal because of this. Yes. I would have my own kind of argument. Cool. So, um, uh, Moving the conversation uh, up from the table, you're saying you are also relying on an agency yeah. if you work with them. What is it you expect from them? What kind of information would you like to receive from them? In my case, it's because we don't have the um, Drupal in-house knowledge. I'm yeah. expecting to have guidance from an agency as to how much we can grow with the you know, existing um, system or the ex existing configuration of our website. Yes. If there are new releases, I'm expecting to hear from them and say, oh, we've got new modules that you might be interested in because I know that you do yeah. this type of activities in your organization yes. and maybe that's a project that you might want to think about. Mm -hmm. So that sort of proactivity, I think that's what I will expect from my agency, you know, just say, okay, we have a retainer, we maintain your site and, yeah. you know, that's it. And, and they leave us just to run that way. And if you know, if you have any issues, then we fix them, etc. But yeah. I'm looking for that expertise, that guidance, that you know. Yeah. Would you Would you be interested in um, a? I'm thinking from a DA perspective, um, newsletter. These are new modules being published on Drupal.org, um, and local associations translating that in their local language and sending out local press releases. Would that be interesting for a client like you? Uh, in my case, yes, I would, I would be happy to receive this type of communications because um, I'm a kind of curious person. So I'm not yeah. just relying on what my agency is telling me. I yes. want to find out from other people's experiences mm -hmm. to see what work they are doing on the field yeah. and you know, what projects they have run, etc. So I'm kind of, you know, in, in two months, I would like to hear from people as well as having the communications coming straight from, from yeah. the group community. Okay. Cool. Are, so. the, are the um, communications that come from the DA segmented to audience already or is it no 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 not yet no so uh, something we should work on yeah i think i think we're from a client organization as well all right and until today Drupal was a black box yeah it was just it's, <laughs> all right so you know and i think uh, although i think the agency did an okay job um of what they built i think we you know we probably have a similar experience so i think as an organisation, you've certainly helped make Drupal more transparent to the users, for sure. All right. Interesting stuff. What, what do you think? Can, can, you know, you're, so you're working I, I, in agencies. I, I, so there is a valid point in here. Oh, sorry. You said we work in agencies. I don't think you introduced I, any of us. No. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you could tell us what you do yeah, and yeah. what your name is. Yeah. I'm Gabby. I'm <laughs> formal uh, nerd. Um, yeah, I work for Manifesto and I'm a PHP slash Drupal practice lead. Um, it's an interesting point and I have to say that probably one of the um, takings, takings from, from, from today, yeah. uh, it should be that Drupal and Drupal community, they're really great on doing stuff, any kind of stuff, promotion, improvements, and the security wise and the communication, the PR, but we are not really good at promoting. So there are a lot of newsletters at any kind of level. There is no segmentation in the of DA, but there are different newsletters mm. in the Drupal community. Yeah. They are more or less technical, more or less sales oriented, more or less uh, innovation oriented. We are not good at promoting. We are not at all. There is, um, is, it, is it called WebDrop? Web drop? The newsletter, the, web, the Drupal? The, the daily yeah, it's not daily. I think it's weekly. It's every it's Thursday, weekly, and this is it's gonna, it could be really good for you because it's not. There are some um, top section articles, and then more in deep tutorial, and then the latest from the latest modules that the top used. And this could be really interesting for you to, to like come back to the to the and say that this is, can be done. Um, for the black box, you see, there are you know the, the Drupal community produce a lot of. Documentation or anything. Don't get me wrong, if we went looking, yeah, yeah. Sure we would find no, 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 no. some push. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. I don't think we should look. Or if you do, it should be really easy for you to find. I think what we are missing here is uh, a really good channel of communication. 
and in this case it's probably a task for the DA to to have these tools or resources yeah. available and easy findable. Yes. I feel like with those newsletters and documentation you kind of already have to know about Drupal to, <coughs> to be in the circle to receive those and I'd love to see us reach out to more like content strategy communities for example yeah. um, and just like look a little bit outside of our bubble and I'm really curious um, just raise your hand if you deal with like incoming clients for your agency okay and then key uh, no no keep your hands up <laughs> okay so uh, keep your hand up if they've already chosen Drupal by the time they find you so like one person put their hand up yeah, Sometimes. so like our, ex our experience, um, so I work, my name's Sally, I, <laughs> I'm a senior technical architect at Lollabot, we do um, lots of client work, and uh, a lot of the time, probably all of the time, people have already chosen Drupal um, by the time they seek us out, and I would love it if uh, we could just reach a little bit kind of further up that decision making process, mm -hmm. so you know, we, we, all of us would have opportunities to get into more projects that maybe have already discarded through <coughs> whether or not that was right for them, I don't know, but yeah. it'd be good to have the opportunity. Yeah. Is, is, it, is that because Lullabot has been a, well, a, a very strong player within the Drupal community with a very strong Drupal positioning, would that be because they, uh, you are, you know, very active within the community and is that because you think that most of the, the requests that come in, the RFPs, are already focusing on Drupal? Is, th is that what you think? or? Um, yeah, I know it's not just us though, because like, we talk to a lot of other agencies and they're yeah. always like, you know, people have already decided on, they decide <coughs> on the technology and then they go and seek out agencies that specialize yeah. in that technology yeah. um, rather than like, we need a CMS and so we should look at resources that tell us lots of things about CMSs in general, which is where they'll look and I don't think Drupal has very good reach in, in those kind of marketing materials. Yeah. Okay, so that's something we can focus on, yeah, in general, but also locally, and, and not, and we can do this globally, but also locally. Yeah, yeah, like a CMS meetup would be super cool, and it'd be nice to like hang out with other CMS people, and that's a way to grow our community without pigeonholing people into just doing Drupal as well. Right. Interesting idea. Interesting. Uh, talking about events, um, there's clients here. Um, you're, you've come to Drupal Camp now. Um, are you also visiting other events like like uh, CMS events or tech events? Uh, yeah, I do. I do attend marketing technology events um, for the systems that I'm interested in, or I use things for <coughs> conferences, the marketing technology expo in the Olympia, where they bring every single technology available for us, uh, different levels for teams, CRMs. CMSs, yeah. e-commerce, everything. So yeah. yes, I'm kind of very keen on understanding what the yeah. industry is doing and what you know how I can benchmark what I'm using versus the other. Yeah. Would you be interested if Drupal would attend those events as well? I mean, I, I was wondering why you don't. I don't. You, know, you don't see Drupal there. Well, it's open source. <laughs> that is that is the challenge. Well, yes, but <laughs> yeah. still, you know, um, people might be interested in. Yeah. Just finding out a bit more about you, having more visibility, I think that might help also to kind of people who are already using it and that it's not going to be like a black box, just you know, like, like it happened to them. So yeah. I think it would be useful, but obviously you need to have your own objectives as to why we want to attend these uh, events. Well. Yeah. Would that be something for local associations that they start attending, you know, collecting money and attend events as well? Yes. Yeah. All right. As long as it was, I think it needs to be an open process with a good governance model, so that you know it doesn't end up with like a closed shop of three people yeah. who are the only ones that yeah. go and they own agencies yeah. and blah blah. blah you know. All right. All right. That costs money, right? It, that it means money. And yeah. We know that the local communities already have problems to organize things like the local government. So how do you tackle that? Well. Um, the, it, I think I think what you need for that is uh, size within the market. You know, you need to have a serious amount of Drupal shops that are willing to promote Drupal altogether, growing the pie together, um, and that requires uh, a lot of guts, but also belief 
in effect that if you join forces in terms of marketing, everybody will gain from it. Um, and that, that requires a lot of guts, but also money. If you all chip in money together, um, you can attend at the larger events where those stakeholders are. Um, uh, as you were talking about, hey, we want to reach out you know, before they make the decision uh, for Drupal. Because um, they, they, as you hear, they, they visit uh, events, they, they, they want to get inspired. Um, and this is where you can do general lead generation for, uh, for Drupal. But that requires money, yeah. And as an ex local, well, no, I still organize stuff locally. <laughs> no, I still do. Um, it's not money that's the problem. Like, finding a sponsor isn't generally that hard for local events. It's venues. Venues are a total nightmare. And it's not even necessarily paying the venues. It's just like, hey, can we find somewhere that's open after hours usually? And then also, if you're after hours, you're excluding lots of people who you know, aren't doing this as volunteerism because, you know, we're enterprise now, it's people's jobs, so there's there's a lot of problems with local organising and I don't think it just comes down to money. Yeah, right. yeah so uh, then when I did the, uh, the session today and I spoke about um, the second courses that you should do, which is completing your work, uh, sponsoring event or giving a venue so just even giving an idea or, or participating on the decision process it's really important because I'm sure that all of you you have much more knowledge than probably what we can do about what venues could be available if your office could be available or if your office downstairs your beauty could be available that's really important for you to chip in yeah. or like get um, your employees to come and speak like yeah why that's not that's really helpful <laughs> So, um, changing the subject over to diversity, um, you had a great talk about diversity, um, and I know, for example, at uh, Drupal.com, uh, nearly 50% of the speakers, you know, is from a diverse background. Um, what can we do on a local level to, to, um, well, promote diversity? Are there any ideas on on that subject? <laughs> yeah, you, you gave a presentation already, but... I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give a couple of thoughts. I think it'd be really interesting to kind of crowdsource some ideas as well, if we can. Yeah. Um, I think, I, so I can't, I don't think I actually knew your name, but you asked me a question about positive discrimination and should we kind of, you know, ask women or people of uh, kind of different backgrounds to speak at events because of who they are. And I think that is a really good and a very important mm -hmm. place to start. Yeah. Um, we absolutely, absolutely need to make sure that for people who are attending events, whether they're a part of the community already or considering joining, that mm -hmm. what they see in front of them is a representative community, that it is inclusive and that people are yeah. welcomed. Mm -hmm. And in the first instance, yes, this may mean that we need to do some behaviours that we don't necessarily want to stick permanently, but we need to make sure that before we're at that point where it is diverse and where we don't have such rigid stereotypes that we make a concerted effort to break them. And I, I think uh, there's a, some really good tests online that you can take about um, cognitive bias and I would highly encourage everyone in this room to do it because um, it might feel like you're making an effort to, to like invite someone you might not have before but I think people don't realize is like you might be making assumptions about that person they'd be just as good a speaker as some dude you were going to get instead. So it's, I think it's good for us to reach outside of our comfort zone. And sort of things like that. So, so would you say that um, this is a subject and even a test that everybody can do at a Drupal camp, uh, for example, to, to um, experience that you have or devices? Would that be something? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. Yeah. I think we also need to create like um, spaces where people can feel comfortable. So, you know, it's all very well you know, getting people from diverse backgrounds to come, but if we don't retain them because, you know, we have people in the meetups acting shitty and mm. leadership won't deal with it, then there's no point either. Yeah. So you say leadership should deal with it. Um, uh, should you talk about leadership from a DA perspective or a local camp leaders or local community leaders? Who, who, who do you define as leaders in, in this respect? so many opinions about this. <laughs> well, I mean, good, like, if I'm organizing a meetup in London, then, you know, whether I like it or not, it make, puts me in a leadership position. Yeah. Um, and so as part of 
that I should be taking on responsibility for like the health of, of the thing that I'm organising. I think it would be really great if the DA could have some kind of guidelines or something for that, even so far as like if you don't subscribe to our code of conduct. I don't think the Drupal code of conduct is very good, but the Drupal Cotton one is, is much better. Like if you don't use that, you can't use Drupal in as the name in your yeah. meetup, for example. Oh, I think the DA could be a lot... Um, I don't know what the word is for that. But, um, but that, that, that is a top down. You, you were talking about you should not do it top down but bottom up. Is, is no, I think, it's, I think it's different. So, what we are saying, and this is exactly the same that we are doing when, when I take, I give the example of the Linux user groups. Um, there was a day in the year which is called Linux Day, and it, was organi it wasn't organized. It was the Italian Linux Society was saying, look, you can organize your local days locally, whoever can. Um, but you have to follow these guidelines. If you follow these guidelines, they will be on our list for that day. Otherwise, you don't. So it's not like enforcing. You can do whatever you want. But if you want to use the Drupal, you should use the code of conduct, as I should yeah. say. So it's not enforcing. It's not me saying what you have to do. Yeah. You are free to do whatever you do, as long as it covers these yeah. guidelines. Yeah. Can, uh, can I go back to what you just said about top down and, and yeah. implication bottom up? I think. Neither one is going to work on their own. It has to be top down and bottom up. Right. You have to have sponsorship, whether it's in a company at the board level, whether it's in the DA, whether it's the leaders of a local Drupal camp. You have to have sponsorship at the top level that this is something that we care about and this is a priority. Yeah. And then on the ground, those of us who are individual contributors, it needs to be something that we're always talking about, that we feel safe enough to talk about, yeah. that we can start to break down those boundaries. Mm -hmm. And because we have that sponsorship from the top, that gives us the confidence to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think there isn't one answer. If there is one answer, the answer is that there's lots of different things that all need to be done at the same time in order to make a change. Yeah, all right. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, we're done. Seriously. All right. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I would like to thank you uh, for being on, on the panel here, sharing all your knowledge. I would like to thank the audience as well for, uh, for giving us a lot of valuable input. And uh, I want a round of applause for everybody. Thank you.